The modern view of neuroscience essentially, and I'm summarizing great volumes here to say that essentially you are your brain. And the reason we think that is because if you were to damage your pinky, um, you would be sad about it, but you would be no different. Uh, if you were to damage an equivalently small chunk of brain tissue, that can change you entirely. It changes your personality, your capacity for decision making, your ability to use language. All of these things can change dramatically when you injure your brain, and it's through seeing hundreds of years of cases like this that we've come to conclude that basically you are your brain. Um, so how many people have heard of Phineas Gage? It's a pretty popular story. Okay, about a quarter of you. So, so Phineas Gage was a young railroad worker in America who uh, was using an iron tamping rod, um, and um, what they would do is dig these little holes and put gunpowder in it, and then put sand on top, and he would tamp it down so they could make explosions. But he ended up causing a spark, and there was an explosion, and it blew the iron tamping rod through his head. And, it, and, and the tamping rod was, was, was uh, blown with such force that it landed about 40 yards away. The stunning part about this case is that he didn't die. That's why it's famous in the literature. He didn't even lose consciousness, it turns out. And so um, what happened was they brought him back to the tent and they you know, staunched the bleeding and made sure he was okay. The reason it's an interesting medical case is because his personality changed entirely. And so people who knew him said, Phineas Gage is not Phineas Gage anymore. He's somebody, he's somebody different now. Uh, in fact, he took to, to gambling and sleeping with prostitutes and cussing, and he just had a completely different personality than he had had previously. And that's what made people think, uh, in the first place, that maybe y your behavior depends on your neurobiology. And in the intervening century and some odd years, we've seen lots of cases like Phineas Gage. Um, and I'll tell you about some of those. Uh, but first, does anybody know who this is, Charles Whitman? This is a famous case in America, but I'm not sure how famous it was here. So in 1966, Charles Whitman uh, climbed up the tower that was in the middle of the campus at the University of Texas at Austin, and he started shooting people indiscriminately. And um, he was shooting the pedestrians on the street, and then he was shooting the people that came to help them, and he shot the ambulance drivers that came to help them. And in total, he killed 14 people. Uh, in an act of random violence. Now, the thing is, there was, n there was no reason to have ever expected this sort of behavior from Charles Whitman because he had been honorably discharged as, uh, as a Marine in the military. He worked as a bank teller. He had been an Eagle Scout. Uh, he was married. And he was generally a good citizen. And so the question was, how, how does it happen that somebody like that does such a gory act of violence. Oh, the other thing is that night, the night before, he had killed his wife and his mother before he went on this shooting rampage. Okay, well, in his suicide note that he wrote that night after killing his wife and his mother, he said, um, I feel like I've been changing, that something's been going wrong with me, and after this is all over, I would like you to do an autopsy. And that's exactly what they did after four deputies got to the top of the tower and were able to shoot him. Um, they did an autopsy, and it turned out that he had a brain tumor. He had a tumor pressing against a part of his brain called the amygdala, which is an area that's involved in fear and aggression. Now, what does it mean to have a tumor there in terms of this behavior? Does everybody with an amygdala tumor behave the way he does? No. Did it have something to do with his behavior? Probably. So these are the types of issues that I want to I talk about tonight. And I'll just tell you one more example, which is, uh, this was just recently in the literature, 40-year-old man, normal sexual appetite, um, he started becoming a pedophile. And his, his wife, who had known him for a couple of decades at this point, knew that this behavior wasn't like him. And so uh, she took him to the doctor, and they did scans, and they found out that he had a massive frontal tumor. So this big white area here is a massive tumor in his brain. So the, the surgeons resected the tumor, and his behavior returned to normal. So about six months later, he started showing interest in pedophilia again. And so his wife took him back to the doctor. It turned out that they had missed a part of the tumor that was growing back, so they resected that, and his behavior went back to normal. So it's a really, it's a really interesting case um, that demonstrates that you are your biology, and when your biology changes, that can change your decision making in quite dramatic ways. And, and, and we have dozens or hundreds of such cases in the literature like this. And in fact, in general, 
Something that's universally administered is, uh, you know, molecules like ethanol, where people pour this uh, across their mucosal membranes and their guts to make them funnier at parties and have a good time. And, and it turns out that, um, you know, these are invisibly small molecules that totally change your behavior. So people do alcohol and drugs. Um, I'm also putting medications as something on here that, that's an indicator that these small molecules can change your behavior because how many of you know what's going on with, with Parkinson's medications now? Have you, have you heard about this? People are taking Parkinson's medications and they're becoming compulsive gamblers. And they're going out and blowing their family's money. Um, and so this is now a, a warning on the labels for these medications. And the reason is because Parkinson's involves a neurotransmitter called dopamine, which is also the neurotransmitter involved with your reward systems and risk aversion. So it turns out that uh, these kindly elderly people who are taking these medications are going out and uh, blowing their family's money. So um, I'm listing medications here also. And, and uh, would anybody here know who this is? This is, this is a, a professional wrestler named Chris Benoit who um, was on heavy doses of steroids and then one night killed his family and then killed himself. Um, and it, it, was, it was a roid rage. So, so it's clear that these really small molecules, when you put these in, they influence your neurobiology, your neurochemistry, and they influence your behavior. So what this means is that nowadays when we talk about morality and decision making, really what we're talking about is the neural basis of this. Okay, well this leads us to a very deep question, and I know that the, uh, the speaker, uh, Chris Frith, is he coming next week, I think? Thir he's coming Thursday, he's gonna be addressing this issue um, as well, which is this issue of free will, which is really in the spotlight now, which is, uh, is the mind separate from the brain or is it the same thing? And because of all the cases we have of brain damage and narcotics and disease states and how people's behavior changes when their brain changes, it's, it's a very um, reasonable hypothesis at this point that, that you are your brain, the first thing that I had mentioned. And maybe they're not separate. And I, 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 I'll be interested to hear what Dr. Frith says, but I find the question of free will a, a difficult one to answer in terms of whether we absolutely have none of it, uh, whether it's all an illusion, I don't know. I think it's too early for us to say. But what is clear is that the unconscious brain is the one in charge, and the conscious you is not the one driving the boat. And just about everything you think and do and act and believe is generated by parts of your brain that you have no access to, you're not even well acquainted with. <laughs> 